and welcome to another episode of Planet Waves TV. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino, the editor of Planet Waves, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the very exciting astrology of the next few days. As mentioned in the most recent edition, we are in a time of eclipses. Back on March 8th, there was a total eclipse of the sun in the sign Pisces, and now two weeks have gone by and we are up to an eclipse of the moon in the sign Libra. So the sun's moved about 14 degrees, and we had one eclipse in, uh, in Pisces on the Pisces-Virgo axis, and now uh, the action has moved into Aries and Libra. And one of the reasons why it's so exciting to have an eclipse that is so close to the equinox is because we get something called the Aries point effect. I've written a lot about this. Uh, it is something that is distinct to modern astrology. It's not uh, that I've ever seen referenced in any form of ancient astrology to count the first degree of Aries as if it is a kind of a planet, but that is pretty much uh, how it acts. It's a planet that stays right in the same degree of the zodiac all the time, and things come to visit it. And there are right now several things coming to visit it, one of which is uh, Mercury, another one of which is the Sun, and then uh, to that we are adding the lunar eclipse, and the lunar eclipse takes place across the dial in the sign Libra. Now both eclipses and the Aries point have this interesting effect that I describe as the personal is political. These are times when uh, Personal events seem to have wider influence, and when things that take place in the political realm uh, are things we take more personally. Uh, the, the, uh, the line from a song that I like to use to describe this is from Television Man by David Byrne, where he says, the world crashes into my living room. And that's often what it feels like when there is some kind of astrology happening around the Aries point, and there most certainly is right now. So I want to show you what that looks like in a, uh, in a chart here produced by the Planet Waves Graphics Department. And uh, in this chart we can see first of all uh, that there are still lots of planets in Pisces. There's still Nessus, Neptune, Venus, Ceres, and Chiron in, uh, in Pisces, plus a couple of hidden planets, Borisisi and one called Manwe, two planets named after fictional entities, a new phenomenon in astrology to be naming things after fictional deities. The first time that happened was in 1992, the name did not stick, but now we have uh, at least two things, three things that are named for fictional entities, and two of them are in Pisces. So uh, they are lurking around, right, uh, right around where Chiron and Ceres are located. So remember that even though the emphasis of the sky is shifting to Aries very distinctly, as we'll see in a second, um, there is still a lot of Pisces influence, and that means influence of the hidden world, the desire to seek pleasure, the uh, desire to make art, and the need to sort out what is true from what is not true. That is one of the, sorry for kicking the tripod there, to sort out from what is true from what is not true. So pay attention to that and, and keep uh, using your logical mind to sort out what is right and what is wrong, what means something to you, what doesn't mean something to you. And remember that you are the person who brings the meaning to what you see and what you experience. Things are not inherently meaningful. You are the maker of meaning. So anytime you ask yourself, what does that mean? Ask yourself, what does that mean to me? All right, so now um, we've seen there's a whole, a whole bunch of uh, Pisces here, but now look, there's all this Aries going on and, and little Miss Vesta and Taurus. So uh, in Pisces, and sorry, in Aries now, uh, for the eclipse, this is again the chart for Wednesday morning, Eastern time, uh, Mercury has entered Aries, the sun has been in Aries for three days and some hours, Uranus has been in uh, Aries for about six years, five years, and, uh, and Eris has been there since uh, the 1920s. So the, uh, the idea of the Aries point, where we have the first degree of, of Aries, which is really located right about there, um, get, getting piled up on with planets means that there is likely to be some kind of an exaggeration 
or amplification effect going on both for you personally and in the wider world around you. This is one of those classic charts that points to some unusual uh, outsized news happening this week and also the sensation of a crescendo of, of a culmination of events that reveals something. And one of the properties of a full moon eclipse and by the way, I didn't mention that, that this is an eclipse of the moon and it happens at the full moon. So all eclipses of the moon happen at the full moon. And when we have a full moon eclipse, it's almost like a veil being pulled back that reveals something that we couldn't see before. So even though the moon is what passes through the Earth's shadow, and this is a penumbral eclipse, so the, the moon is going to pass through the edge of the shadow of the earth, not the really dark part, but the kind of gray area uh, that exists between the dark shadow and where there is no shadow. Uh, even though it's just a penumbral eclipse, uh, there is still this sensation of a veil being pulled back from our reality. And this fits the Pisces theme. It fits the Pisces theme of look for what is uh, more acclimated to the hidden world rather than what is more acclimated to the seemingly real or manifest world, right? Okay, so uh, that is happening. And um, eclipses are exciting. And as you can see, there's a lot happening in Aries. And by the way, the uh, I, I don't have enough room on this for Taurus, which would be uh, rather for Libra, which would be all the way over there. So I'm showing you what is opposite the eclipse, and all of this really is opposite the eclipse. Now for the main thing in this chart that I'm seeing, and we've been uh, slowly shifting the theme of planet waves uh, onto this, which is an, uh, an, a conjunction that happens on a something like a 90-year a basis, and that is the conjunction of Uranus and Eris. Eris takes around 556 years to go around the sun. Uranus takes about 84 years to go around the sun. So they chase each other for a long time. And then finally, Uranus comes back and makes its conjunction to Eris a little under once per century in our era. And that is what makes this such a, a, a rare and beautiful event. And the uh, adding to that is the fact that it takes place in Aries. And adding to that is the fact that we have Uranus, which is a kind of a rebellious, revolutionary, naughty planet that likes to invent things and disrupt things and change things, conjunct Eris, a planet that very few astrologers have uh, sought to understand. There's been relatively little written about it. There's relatively little discussion about Eris, incredibly, but Eris is there, and Eris was discovered in 2005, named in 2006. Eris is the planet that led to astronomers rethinking the, uh, the category of Pluto and creating this category called the dwarf planet, which is a kind of a minor planet that is not an official planet like Neptune or the Earth, so it's kind of a diminutive kind of reduced planet, except that these are not reduced in power in any way. One, one way to think of a minor planet is like a minor key in music. A minor key is no less important than a major key in music, but it has the designation minor, and a minor planet is no less impactful or meaningful or relevant than a so-called major planet. Uh, it, it is just that it has a, a different kind of a description. And Eris represents a few things, all of which are related to a kind of uh, either kaleidoscopic chaos, uh, the sensation of not knowing who we are, the sense of being lost within oneself, and the sense of not quite knowing how to define yourself or how to define your reality. And we, we live with a lot of this now, and we take it for granted, and we're in a kind of an age of Eris where we simply expect everything to be chaotic all the time. We expect there to be more and more chaos mounting every minute of the day. And uh, th that's pretty much what we've got going on. Only this effect is profoundly enhanced by the presence of Uranus. And these planets have been, uh, this cycle has, has lasted about 90 years, and it is 
working its way on up and now the first of three exact uranus eris conjunctions takes place on june 8th and this eclipse is a kind of an inaugural event uh, it is now pointing to the libra aries axis where uh, the emphasis is going to shift now for the spring and i think that we're likely to see one of the most unusual conjunctions since the uranus pluto conjunction of the 1960s uh, this is going to take some describing and some explanation and some using history as a kind of a tool to understand the way that these conjunctions work but I've been studying conjunctions to Eris and uh, conjunctions from Uranus so I've been looking at all kinds of similar conjunctions and they are always moments when the energy moves at a very rapid pace and I think that it is a a beautiful thing this is taking place in an election year it's taking place in the year of the monkey which is a super high energy year so we've got the leap year thing going on the year of the monkey thing going on and then this uranus Eris conjunction which stretches out until 2017 but the reality is this is a conjunction with a five-year orb of influence on either side so we've been living with its effects since the moment that uranus got into aries uh, back on the 11th of march 2011 and and the world has felt like this and now we're likely to see in my opinion what is lurking even deeper inside this aspect we've got the political nominating conventions going on we have the sanders campaign we have the trump campaign we have the mainstream candidates like hillary and and the world just seems to be coming to a boil and that is what i think this uranus eris conjunction is about in an energetic way uh, i'll have more to say about this on the pages of planet waves this somewhat lends itself to a bit more thorough uh, reflective analysis than we can do here on planet waves tv but i do want to cue you into the fact that this is happening uh just Pay attention these next few days. Events are likely to proceed very quickly. There are likely to be some surprises in the cards, and you will need to make your decisions one at a time as they come. You can't really rush ahead of these eclipses. You can only really pay attention and decide what to do in the moment, what is the right thing to do. And a lot of times that's going to be based on what you knew in advance, and sometimes it's going to be based on what you thought you knew in advance and it's time to let some new information uh, into your thought process and into your creative process i will have more to say about all of these things on planetwaves.fm which will go up on tuesday evening as usual we'll be updating the planetwaves.net daily magazine and then i will be introducing the subject of uranus conjunct eris in a big way on thursday in the thursday night weekly edition of planet waves thank you to my subscribers core community members backstage past members and reading customers and clients you make all the stuff that we do at planet waves possible on behalf of all of us here at planet waves thanks for tuning in and i'll catch you on a different day bye for now